Hey, what's up, everyone? So um, I wanted to actually talk about some random thoughts I've been having about, like, you know, streaming music and why I actually prefer the streaming model to physical media. Because what I hear a lot of people say when they prefer physical media to streaming is that they don't like the idea that you can't own any of your own music. And I think that really this is a conversation about what ownership of music actually means. Because let's say you have an entire wall of CDs, but you only ever listen to three of them. Essentially, Essentially, all you actually own is a, you know, multi-thousand dollar piece of set dressing. And likewise, if someone stole a CD of yours, or if you lost it, or it broke, or you scratched it up, or whatever, would you lose ownership of that music? Like, would you lose ownership of Master of Puppets? Would you lose ownership of Power Slave? Would you lose ownership of Peace Sells But Who's Buying? Would you lose ownership of Rain and Blood? Be honest. Assuming that you've been listening to metal for like, you know, a couple years by now, is there any possible way that you could legitimately feel like you had lost ownership of any of these albums? See, in my opinion, ownership of music is something that you continually earn by familiarizing yourself with it, allowing yourself to live in it, and incorporating it into, you know, your wider understanding of music as a whole. And I think when you look at ownership of music this way, it opens up a much more nuanced and interesting conversation about it. See, when I was a little kid and, you know, had only been listening to metal for about like, you know, a year or so, if you had taken away my copy of Master of Puppets, I would not have felt any less an ownership of that album because my ownership of it was here and it was here. Likewise, I have actually never owned a physical copy of a Battle Beast album, but I feel a genuine sense of ownership over their music because again, my ownership of their music is here and it's here. So really, I don't think that the streaming model is about not owning music, but I do think that it makes the process of actually accomplishing that ownership more involved and more, you know, demanding of your energy. And the real problem isn't too little ownership of music, it's too much. Because no matter what genre you're into, there is almost infinite music out there for you, but you do not have infinite time. So you do have to be a lot more strategic about the music that you give that time to. You have to make a real effort to listen to as much music as possible, really determine what you're connecting with, and really try to develop a genuine understanding of that music. It's more challenging, but it's also more rewarding because more than ever, you can curate your own personal musical diet. You're no longer bound by having accidentally spent your weekly CD budget on the one shitty CD in a band's discography. I keep thinking back to this, you know, hypothetical kid who's been hearing a lot about this Iron Maiden band that is supposed to be really cool. And, you know, this kid scrounges and spends a month saving up money and he goes out and buys the X Factor. You know, he's going to sit down and he's going to be like, what the fuck am I listening to? Whereas with streaming, everything Iron Maiden does is available to him right then and there. And they can know exactly what they're all about and what's so great about them. You are more free now than ever before to surround yourself with nothing but the music that really speaks to you and that you connect the strongest with. You just have to put a little bit more effort into accomplishing the ownership of it. Uh, so yeah, um, I hope that made sense. I hope that wasn't too rambly or whatever. Um, yeah, just my random thoughts. Cool. Peace out.